Hi, it's Milo Melodies at Geoffrey Music Synth and Tech, and today we're going to be looking at Bitwig Spectral Devices, and timestamp to when the noises begin is below. But first, I want to mention how Bitwig works and acknowledge something about this update, because it must be said that this is a bit of a change to how it was first announced. Because when it was first announced, the Spectral Devices were a paid add-on. There was a tremendously strong community reaction to this, and it's led to Bitwig making this update just a part of Bitwig Studio and the 12 month upgrade plan. And Bitwig clarified that in their words, moving forward, all of our Bitwig Studio feature development, including devices, will be covered by the 12 month upgrade plan. And that means that if you have Bitwig Studio and you have an active upgrade plan, then you get the four spectral devices that we'll look at in a sec. And in case you're new to Bitwig, the way that it works is that when you buy Bitwig Studio, you're effectively buying the software outright as it is. And it is extremely awesome. It does loads of cool things, including actually noteworthy, it runs on Linux. So you can run it on a Steam Deck, which is very cool, uh, but not really relevant to now. Um, but it is unique and awesome. And when you buy it, you get it outright. It doesn't expire. For the following 12 months after you buy your Bitwig, you'll get any new version and any new devices as well. Now, after 12 months, you don't lose anything that you paid for and you can keep using the program in perpetuity. But if at some point after 12 months, there's an update for Bitwig Studio and you decide that you really want to have that update, then you would need to buy a thing called the 12 month upgrade plan. And what that does is it brings you like right up to date and it will give you all of the subsequent updates and new devices for 12 months afterwards. And obviously the whole point of these upgrade plans is to help fund further development for Bitwig. You know, it keeps Bitwig growing. And again, to stress, if you choose not to buy an upgrade plan and to let the 12 month upgrade plan that you might have got with your Bitwig studio elapse, then you don't lose access to anything. And actually one quick tip, if you are thinking of getting Bitwig studio, you may have bought something that gave you a Bitwig 8-track license. An 8-track is a sort of cut-down version of Bitwig that is given away with some audio interfaces and MIDI controllers variously. So double-check in case you may have received Bitwig 8-track because there is actually a cut-price upgrade from 8-track to Studio, and it saves you some money over the cost of Studio. So it's kind of a, like a sneaky upgrade route. If you do have 8-track, there is a special upgrade that you can get access to and it will give you a bit of a cheaper way into getting it. So without further ado, let me hand over to the red shirted me and we'll have a look at these four spectral devices. First up, frequency split. So I thought this would be quite kind of conventional, a bit like a multiband EQ, but it's really unique and bonkers. So if I play you this, what we've got here is the um, U-Jam Silk plugin, making a nice sort of guitar. And these coloured bands denote the bands that we have split our sound up into. And there are four bands with different colours and four different slots that I can put effects on. And if I just increase the mix, a sort of uh, kind of animal collective sort of sparkly thing. <laughs> I mean, it suddenly got very strange. And what was happening was that, um, sure, we were splitting up the bands in there are four bands with different colours, and I can then apply different effects to different bands. But then I'm able to animate the bands and move them around um, with an LFO, because in Bitwig, you can just animate pretty much everything. Uh, so suddenly it becomes this kind of wonderful animated effect. And just to show you very quickly what I've got on each one. So on band one, I had the Archeria Delay Tape 201 and I can solo that. There's a bit of drive to that. I'm in the way, excuse me. See it there? Then band two, I've got uh, a comb filter. Nice. 
And then on band three, I've got a pitch shifter up 12 semitones and some reverb. I like that. And then on band four, I've got distortion. Sounds really good, this distortion on so many of these uh, spectral devices. And so you can apply different effects to each one. You could EQ each one differently. There's, you can chain up as many effects as you could imagine. The other things you can do is you can pan the band for sort of magical, strange results. And you can adjust the volume of the bands, um, <laughs> do more things. But I just wanted to show you a very quick example. So we're applying different things to the spectrums, to bands. And then we're moving the bands around. So you could apply compressors and you could create a multi-band compressor that had control over, you know, so many different aspects of the sound. But um, I hope this illustrates it goes beyond what a multi-band compressor is able to do. You're able to apply effects to any band and move them around. <laughs> so it's just wild. Next, let's look at transient split. Now what transient split does is it divides the sound into its transient, its initial sort of hit a transient hit and the ensuing tone and now that works really well on things like bass guitars and drums where drums have an initial and then a dum, you know from the drum itself and bass guitars where you've got like a pluck and a boom you know so what i've got is both a bass guitar and a drum example and let's just hear this drum loop that's the dry loop. By the way, this is another U-Jam plugin called Deep. And so I've made this kind of like grainy sort of dirtified version. And what I've done here is because you see here's the transient component. The sharp hits low down element or how it best divides those components and you can choose the bias and do a little bit of kind of fine tuning on how it picks out what's a transient and what's not but then here i can apply effects to transient and i've just put a smashing compressor on it and i've got some reverb and pitch shifting as well just to give it that pitch shifted sort of vibe and then on the tones i've got a pitch shifter down and I've got the Rev Spring 636 from Archeria, which is just wonderful. Like a bit of spring reverb and drive from that. Um, so we get a completely different character. It's really interesting being able to put sound on the transient and the, uh, the tone. You can also, of course, EQ these components differently. So um, I'm, tr I'm doing a bit of more whacked out stuff in this video because that's just what caught my eye here. And then that's sort of what I was interested to try. But you can also use this as a very powerful mixing tool. Another example. bit weird it's also quite grungy but what i've got is distortion on the um, transient and there is a little bit of delay on the whole drum loop by the way that's it without and that's with and then let's go to the uh, tonal part and then i've got a phaser i think So the key thing here is that the phaser is not on the hits, you know, the bright, sharp parts of the hits. The phaser is on the like lower tonal component of the drums, or again, what it best, you know, how it divides them. And you can adjust these things. There are smoothing controls, decay controls, just to slightly fine tune how it's selecting which component of the sound. So next, transient on bass. And now I've got the Dandy, which is another U-Jam plugin. Got a lot of those going on today. Very straightforward. And 
what I've got here is chorus on the tonal part. And then I've got just like a little slap back sort of um, delay, which I think is the memory, sort of memory boy style plugin from Archeria, Memory Brigade. This is part of FX Collection from Archeria, which is very good. Loads of interesting effects in there. I mean, there's quite a lot of effects on this mix, so you will have to forgive me, but it's an example. So we want to hear like loads of effects. Sort of going for a bit of like the 90s uh, propeller head sort of vibe, perhaps. Not as good as that, of course. What is as good as the propeller heads? Uh, one and only hit album. Whatever happened to the propeller heads? It's a question. <laughs> pleasant i could listen to that for a long time so this is loudness split so we've had frequency split we've had transient split loudness split splits the frequency spectrum based on the loudness so there are these thresholds here three bands where you've got quiet mid and loud and i can apply different effects to the different sort of parts of that and what i've got here is Delay on the mid part. Now I actually don't have anything on the loud, so what we could do is a little example just to show you how it works. You pick the, um, you know, the block here, and then if I click this plus icon, I can add reverb. Let's add reverb. Notice how I can adjust the band up and down to choose, and then it's showing me in um, red here. If I solo it, that actually sounds really lovely, just soloing the loud part. It's a kind of spooky sign vibe, because I guess it's just picking out. I really like the solo bands here, I just think it it's a really unique and curious hearing each part individually. So the point here is that when it hits a certain threshold, it adds reverb just to that part that has hit the threshold, and the other parts get different processing. This mid gets delay, and this quiet gets a little bit of um, amp simulation, like a subtle drive. This is the dry signal. And then I'll fade in the affected. Really lovely. So what you're hearing is just this ability to apply effects in a sort of controlled way. Because we're not applying the sound uniformly to everything at once, we're applying it dynamically to parts of the sound that hit a certain threshold, then what the spectral devices let you do is really not just do weird, whacked out things to parts of the sounds, but also have very controlled applications where things only come in at certain carefully managed levels, if that makes sense. So you actually can get very nice subtle results, I think. Hopefully that shows that to some degree. Um, then the final one is harmonic split, which is just really crackers, where what it's doing is it's applying effects to the odds and even harmonic components of the sound and also the non-harmonic parts too. And we can choose which of the harmonics get picked out. It's like a comb filter but you're applying sound to just individual bands of the comb. Uh, this probably doesn't make any sense, but... Here's a piano, sort of. Dry. Wet. So 
it's very odd, uh, really. And then it's even. Uh, listen to just the odd component. So what I've got on the odd parts of the sound, the odd harmonics only, is distortion. And it just sounds really good. It gives this kind of weird, sort of odd, non-piano-y thing to it. And I've got a bit of delay as well. To the evens, pitch shifting. Which, uh, by the way, and also some reverb. And chorus, actually, I should say. Oh no, I haven't got that applied. Which gives it a very kind of battled sort of vibe, for those of you who are familiar with that band. Um, and then an inharmonic sound. I think I've just got reverb. Oh, and a phaser. Nice. And I can pan these. That's just really peculiar. One quick other thing to mention here is that you can actually change the uh, bands that get picked out. They're set to odd and even harmonics, but if you adjust this, you can have like every you know, 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th, and do kind of weird things where you pick out even more, you know, pick out the bands even more differently, if that makes sense. So, and again, in each of these cases, you just come in here and you just put effects on these little parts and you've got volume controls, panning controls. So just really unique. Four different ways to apply effects to parts of the sound. And although I know like Eventide's Fission and Split EQ, which can do some of what we're seeing here, I don't know of another kind of all-in-one package where you get like this much control. And obviously because it's in Bitwig, then the ability to modulate your effects and modulate parts of how these bands are being chosen and animated. So you start to discover ways of applying effects that like I've never personally been able to do any other way. So... Um, yeah, that is the Bitwig Spectral Suite. Thank you, Redshirted Me, for that excellent demo of those four spectral devices. If you're looking at picking them up, there are links below, gear for music or a shop, and you can purchase Bitwig Studio and upgrades and all manner of wonderful things there. So please have a look at the links in your description, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>